morning, everybody. So we present this um, study case uh, together with uh, with Jan. So um, our study case deals with a wharf that was um, that was built uh, this year. But we will you will see that we have uh, the experience of um, of the monitoring of several wharves in France. So um, just key issues about um, about wharves. So. 80% uh, of the world overseas trade um, and 99% in USA passes uh, through ports. That's a key role in European defense. Uh, 3 million people are employed by this sector in Europe. And the state for maintenance is, uh, for instance, in France, that we have 100 kilometers of walls. That's probably 1,000 kilometers of beams. Um, and uh, among uh, which uh, 64 kilometers are built in reinforced concrete platforms. So what is uh, a platform that's uh, uh, three about 300 meter of length structure with and about uh, 20 to 30 meters wide and with um, 1.6 kilometers of beam if you consider um, uh, a structure like that. Uh, in France, 10 million euro uh, um, uh, are given for, man for maintenance, for curative maintenance of these structures. So there are some reports in USA where you can find other uh, figures. And uh, so that's typical, the building of the structure we, will, we have instrumented this year. So there is an existing video on YouTube. Okay, so we are a little less views than Rihanna, but uh, it's progressing. <laughs> and, um, and uh, so um, what, um, wh what we will present today is four sub-study uh, sub sub cases, um, two, two topics mainly. The first one is the maintenance, of course. So Lois, I say the, the benefit of chloride for concrete. And, uh, and the second is the retrofitting. So make based on the mechanical uh, understanding of the, of the structure. Why? Because uh, uh, boundary conditions of this type of structure are very uh, difficult to model. So there are a lot of, of assumptions when you, when you design it. And uh, so the real behavior is very far from the design behavior. So uh, any, any, cap any sensors you put in the structure give information about that. So that could be the second sub study case. But that's two separate problems for, for us in, uh, in our presentation. Um, so the cost of... Um, if we deal with the first one, that will be my main, our main purpose today, so the maintenance of, um, of structure due to chloride ingress, the cost of NDT, uh, typically a core, and you, you measure the, the chloride inside, uh, is 1,000 euro per point. The cost of the sensor is 1,000 euro, and more or less, or, or between 1,000 and 2,000 euros, but you have three to four points. So the cost analysis is finished now, <laughs> but it's not so simple. Um, so we have two uh, two key questions. The first one is that the uncertainties for uh, NDT and, and sensors are not the same, and the second one is that the lifetime of the sensor is not the lifetime of the structure. Probably ten years, not more. We lose uh, for this type of structure. We lose about thirty percent of the sensors after the first year. So we have to keep that in mind. So that's not magic. That's reali reality. Um, so um, that's, that's um, the plan of the structure, where you, when you can see the tyros here in the soil, the river is here, and the platform is here. So you can see how it, how it works. So there are tyros here to support the horizontal loading, and the pies to support the, um, the vertical loading. So that's a very simple scheme uh, analysis. Uh, um, mm. And uh, you can see that there are a lot of interaction with soil, and of course that's the problem of the boundary condition I have uh, I have explained before. And so we have five monitoring structures in Nantes. So uh, that's the, that's the fifth one. And the, 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 this one, uh, we, we we for for this one we monitor uh, the the tyros mainly. So we have quite a lot of papers uh, dealing with the understanding of the of the monitoring of uh, of tyros. Um, so, Jan, if you can speak about uh, what we did this year. Okay, so um, we focused uh, on a particular uh, 
um, area of the, of the structure. In fact, uh, two structural elements that we call uh, beam. Um, the wharf is built uh, with a precasted uh, element with a shape of uh, shell and uh, between uh, two shells. Uh, so you have uh, some uh, enforcement uh, uh, elements and so the structural elements that we call uh, beam. Um, we have uh, 40, uh, 40 sensors uh, in this area and just here uh, we collect all the data you can see uh, here and uh, we have started uh, to uh, collect the data uh, when we uh, cast uh, concrete so we have uh, all the history of the construction and we also uh, perform some uh, material tests on the same concrete Okay, so uh, six months uh, after the beginning of the construction, we are able to, to assess uh, uh, the performance of the whole uh, measuring uh, device. Uh, so we have uh, some uh, broken sensor now. Uh, we have uh, broke uh, some, uh, some wire uh, during construction. And uh, we have some uh, minor problem with uh, water in uh, electric uh, um, connection. So uh, for, for the rest, we are still uh, recording the, the, the data. And so we consider the decision context, as I said before, we, we wanted to, to, to discuss with uh, not authorities and, uh, and see what could, be, um, wh what could be interesting for them. So the first one, the first question, is um, the um, usual quantification of the, of the value based on preventive maintenance due to the monitoring of chloride ingress. So that's the main focus of our, our sub-study. Uh, sub the second one, uh, I don't know well, if we will work uh, on it because we, I think we need a collaborative work uh, uh, in this action if you want to, to, to do that, is uh, has built behavior of the, of the structure. Um, I, I mean the, the mechanical behavior and to see how it could be interesting to have this behavior, this real behavior, in case of retrofitting uh, of, of, of this structure. So uh, retrofitting is needed because the lifetime of, a, of the, this type of structure is about 100 years and during 100 years the use will change. So there will be a, a more oil, more coal or containers, on, but it will change. Now it is, uh, it is used for uh, wind turbines, okay, provided by, uh, by um, General Electric. But uh, we know that uh, ten, in 10 years, these wind turbines will not be the same. That's, uh, that, that changes a lot. Or there will be no uh, wind turbine in Nantes. So that could be, uh, that could be, uh, that, that could be, that could arrive too. So um, uh, the third one is a change of paradigm. So to, 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 to go from the means based contract towards the performance-based contract during works about the concrete performance. Because for, for the moment, we put some concrete uh, beside, we make tests, but that's not really the concrete that is inside the structure, okay? And the last one is the uh, detection of initial cracking in view to have a better understanding of the, um, of the prob probable um, um, development of cracking in the, in the concrete. But we will not deal with that in the, in the cross section, it's not, uh, realistic to, to, to work on this. Um, so I will not uh, uh, tell uh, more about the, the flow chart because that will be uh, presented in the, in the slides after. Um, so first we will discuss how we want to, to deal with that and if it's convenient for you. So um, the sensor first. So uh, we just speak about um, uh, the measurement uh, of uh, chloride ingress. So we design a um, uh, measurement uh, device with a different sensor because uh, we are not sure of the performance and of the uh, life duration of the sensor. So we propose uh, some uh, new uh, sensors, some resistivity sensor on a one meter length, uh, some uh, chloride sensor, just here. But we are not sure about uh, the life duration of uh, this, uh, this sensor and uh, some uh, armature uh, potential sensor uh, that uh, you can see uh, so here, here, and here. So the instrumentation uh, is redundant and uh, we complete it uh, with uh, some um, 
temperature sensor because uh, all the data are uh, also sensible to temperature and we have to, uh, to correct it. So uh, the resistivity sensor that are, uh, our new uh, sensor um, provide a map of resistivity under the sensor. So we have uh, one meter of measurement with the uh, with uh, 200 points and so <coughs> we, we are able to make uh, some statistics and uh, so we are not dependent of the material e heterogeneity of the concrete and um, we have uh, assessed the performance of this sensor uh, by casting uh, different concrete with uh, different le uh, with different content uh, of, uh, of chloride uh, inside so we have uh, the probability of detection and the probability of false alarm for uh, different level of uh, of chloride. So what we want to, to, to do here is, um, is a service limit state, so durability due to chloride ingress, induced corrosion, but we will um, stop at the corrosion initiation. So there is two main reasons for that. Uh, is to simplify the whole analysis because there is quite a lot of parameters that will act. So first, that's uh, the, the first reason. The second one is that uh, it's not reasonable to change the rebar uh, on this type of structure because the access is very difficult. So to remove rebars and to install a new rebar, it's, uh, it's very, very costly. So uh, we tested in a, an another project the efficiency of, um, of several repair, and we consider that we just change the, the concrete cover uh, in, this, uh, in, in, in this project, so we can change uh, the, the concrete cover thickness and the type of, um, of, um, of, of repair. Um, so, uh, usually, usual practice consider um, semi-destructive testing, so cores, uh, where we, we have demonstrated with um, Manuela Salta from NEC that there are lo large uncertainties that it was, it was uh, published very, very recently. Um, destructive testing, so the, I mean autopsy, that could uh, help to make the link between the, um, the chloride and um, detection tracer, um, sorry, corrosion uh, initiation, uh, because there is not a direct link, and uh, repair efficiency. And um, so for a session, what, so the action are here for this, and the action for a session could be uh, the distributed sensors that we promote, uh, the standard probe, uh, and uh, the corrosion initiation, so the potential measurement. And you can add, of course, uh, you can consider these two actions uh, by adding these two, um, these two uh, SHM systems. Um, we, have, we can add something else, is to make accelerated tests in, uh, in lab and to compute the, f the factor of acceleration of the test in lab. So we do that with a um, Bayesian network, and we have already tested with uh, non-destructive testing, but not with uh, SHM, but it, uh, it, will, it will be made. Um, so the cost function is the usual cost function, so that's the cost um, uh, uh, in link with the risk of uh, corrosion initiation, and considering the inspection, the structural monitoring, and the repair. Okay, repair is that. Um, and the variable has the chloride content at the level of the, of the rebar and the critical uh, threshold for corrosion. Okay, uh, so we will have a component approach, so we use only one component, but uh, we want uh, probably to, we will don't know if we will do that in the cost section, but what could be interesting is to have a structural approach. For that we need spatial variability, so spatial variability can differ from a structure to another one, so what we do now is to compare uh, the data we have in several structures in Nantes, the data that uh, Bernd had in, uh, in Trondheim, and the data that um, um, Alan Han has in, um, in Trinity. Um, so, uh, and from that we will see if we can uh, find bond uh, to, the, um, to the interval of variation of the length of correlation, or if it's too random. Okay, and for the moment, we, I think we will We'll be able soon to, to, to say something about that. But it's, I think it's probably not realistic to have the whole uh, uh, analysis, uh, including spatial variability. So probably we have not more time. So I do just go very quickly, not on this aspect about the retrofitting, but on the last question that we have had with, um, with Vim uh, yesterday, <coughs> how we will model uh, the things, so we don't have any, any information about the reality because it's just monitor the structure. 
Um, and so we have to model a virtual reality that could happen in the, in the future. So um, for that, we have to use model. And uh, so the first way could, could be to use um, uh, simplified models. So there are um, about um, between seven and eight, I don't remember, uh, usual models in the literature. And we have benchmarked this model in a, in a project in France. And the, um, there are two main drawbacks. The first one is uh, there is correlation between, uh, between parameters, not because that's physically co correlated, but it comes from the correlation itself, from the calibration itself. For instance, if you use a fixed function, you correlated the random variables due to the fixed function, not due to the, to, to, to the correlation of, uh, of, the, of the parameters. Uh, it, that's it. And the second one, if you use that in the, in the probabilistic um, uh, framework, the capacity of these models to predict is very bad uh, due to the form of the, of the model okay, and, the, and the role of the parameters in, uh, in, uh, in, in the model. So we have, we have, we have shown that and we, uh, we have a report about that if you are interested. Uh, that was made in a, in a PhD in a, in a national project in France. And so what we will use is for the simulations is a finite element and difference, uh, and finite difference model that we have in lab, and uh, so the, that's good for simulation, to simulate the reality, but the problem is, uh, is very difficult to update because there are a lot of factors inside. So humidity, the temperature outside, and so all, all are stochastic processes. So what we will do is to use uh, gamma processes for uh, the updating. So that could be uh, um, Bayesian network or gamma processes. So this process, we have already presented that in the cost action. I think it was two years ago in, uh, in Copenhagen. And um, so we were quite a bit uh, with, uh, with, um, with um, the, the prediction and the use of these uh, gamma processes. So that's why we will, we, do, we will use it with uncertainty of measurements, of, of course. And, um, and the, the behavior, the change of behavior of the, of the sensor depending on the chloride content. Okay, so that's, um, that's what we plan to do. And that's, that's why the, the discussion is open, I think, now. Thank you very much. This is uh, extremely uh, complex. Uh, <laughs> and, uh, a lot of work, uh, a lot of efforts, a lot of... Uh, Models uh, are already there and have been developed. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I hope it was not too complex. <laughs> <laughs> it was understandable. Uh, can we go to uh, the slide where uh, we have actions? Uh, there was, uh, yeah, click this one. There's actions described. Uh, can you uh, go through uh, this again? Uh, yeah. So, um, the actions that will be used for the optimization of the um, of the inspection and repair without structuralized monitoring yeah. are um, okay. the semi-destructive testing, yeah. the destructive testing, and the repair actions. Okay, the repair actions. We have three op th th uh, yes three repair actions, yeah. and these uh, repair actions are not so the cost of the repair is not the same and the efficiency is yeah. not the same. Yeah. So yeah. we have the information for this. And the actions, if you have SHM, they are yeah. they look a little different uh, than the ones. Yeah, because we will have. Well, if you if you if we add the, the SHM, yeah. Okay, so, so that's the decision on the measurement devices. The, the A SHM is the decision on what we could measure, and the A is the action what we can do with the system. So therefore, it's different. That's the first decision. What do we measure? Yeah, well, I'm, I'm after three, uh, but, uh, okay, um, so, that so if uh, I'm, I'm after the point uh, that uh, in the value of, or we call it the value of information analysis, so we quantify yeah. the value of the information, and then uh, the, uh, maybe this is, uh, this is the case and I don't clearly see it, but uh, only if the actions in the prior decision analysis and in the pre-posterior decision analysis are the same, then we are quantifying the value of information. If the actions are different, we, uh, it could be because, because you have more options, if you have uh, more precise data, then we don't quantify necessarily only the value of information, but yeah. also the value of information and actions. Yeah. yeah? 
Okay. So yeah, because here we mix um, in th this presentation we mix the actions due to the uh, collection of information. So the yep. difference yep. you consider uh, no accession or with accession. But the repair actions are the same. Yeah. 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 Okay. So it's yep. two yep. two actions, right? Yep. First action: what do we measure? Yeah. What brings okay. us new information? Yeah. Second. But I have a question about the a priori. Uh, what is the a priori model? So we have an a priori model about this. Uh, corrosion development over time, right? Yeah, that's and that's then, a simulation. And, and then the uncertainty is increasing over time, yeah. right? in, the, in your time uh, horizon. So it's also, you, you, you find also different uh, values of information on different times. Yeah. That's also interesting to look at, right? Yeah. So you can more uh, find an optimal timing of your... Yeah, that's so. I, I yeah, that, that, that was made for NDT mm -hmm. already. So the optimum time wa was computed mm -hmm. for inspection. And so we 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 have to, to to compare that the cost this cost mm -hmm. with the cost with the session. Mm -hmm. Very good. Okay, super. Thank May you. May I much. ask a question? Yeah. Uh, the probabilities of detections are for different level of uh, levels of corrosion. Yeah. And these uh, come from other data. Yeah. Previous data. Yeah. If you didn't have this data. Sorry. If you didn't have this data. Yeah. Uh, all this would have been possible? Yes, but it would be wrong. <laughs> it would have been? <laughs> it would be wrong, probably. Uh, no, no, because, uh, yes, I agree. I, just, uh, I was just trying to, to shift from uh, uh, corrosion to another type of damage. Yeah. If you have a, a, a damage on which you don't have this uh, probability of detections, would it be possible to apply an analysis like this, according to you? Yes, I, so, so, so the quality of detection is very, very important for concrete. That's a very, that's a very important input. Uh, for instance, we, we just discovered that for resistivity, so on, on a bridge, that we you probably the, know the Deco Freight project you know, that we had with, um, uh, with Bruno Goda. Um, so uh, we discovered that the um, uh, coefficient of variation of, um, of, um, of the measure of resistivity in a, in a rich concrete, is uh, is not uh, is not constant, is not linear, and is exponential, depending on the, of the resistivity. So uh, that means that um, the uh, uncertainty of measurement will be complex to model, and uh, so that if you we don't you don't have that, you will assume that the equation of variation is constant or the standard deviation is constant, dependent of the of the resistivity. But that's not the case, and that's changed completely the, the result. Okay.